Video, we are going to discuss different training methods for a model of a given supervised learning. We will discuss methods like word out method, keyboard cross validation, bootstrap sampling, and lazy versus eager learners. In supervised learning, a model is trained using labeled input data. Now, this once the model is trained, how do we evaluate the performance of a model? How can we judge that model is performing or predicting a good values or good labels or not? Then that's why we must have something called as test data. So it might happen that test data is not immediately available or the values of test data may not be known at the time of testing. So what do we do? We at the time of training the model, we keep some or we hold out some of the part of training data. That's why this method is called as pulled out method. So part of input data which is used for training a model is held back for evaluating the performance of a model. We generally keep 70 to 80 percent of a training data kept aside for later on measuring the performance of a model. So, 70 to 80 percent of data is used for training and remaining 20 to 30 percent of data is used as a test data for validating the performance of a model. So, the nature of the data in training and testing must have similarity in nature. That means I cannot have all types of similar samples in training data and similar kind of samples in testing data. So the distribution of type or nature of the data on samples must be equally distributed in training as well as in testing. That's why it is important to discuss the method of distribution of training and testing of data. We basically we generally use random sampling so that the random samples goes in testing of part, testing data part and random samples also goes in training data part. Now we have kept this 20 to 30 percent of data for test, testing the performance of a model. Now the label of these test data is first predicted, is first given to the model and its values or labels are predicted using model target function. Once this value is predicted, we compare this predicted value with an actual value of a label. Since this is a part of an input data, their labels are already known. And we find the accuracy of prediction value by finding the performance of a model. In most of the cases, we divide our input data into three different chunks instead of two. So instead of dividing your complete input data into training and test data, we also introduce third type of in data that is called as validation data. Now what is the difference between validation data and test data? So obviously we all know that training data is used for building the model. Whatever the performance of a model is first test against the validation data set. According to this validation performance of the data set, we adjust the parameters of a model and again later on we can measure the performance of a model with the same validation set. So over an equation, we are adjusting the parameters of a model and again and again we are checking its performance against validation data set. Once all the parameters of models are set and we are ready to go, we finally check its performance of a model is by applying the test data. So here one thing you should note that validation is performed over different models iterations in iterative manner with the help of validation data set. But its actual performance of a model is measured only once after all parameters are set and using the test data over the given model. So basic use of validation data set is to avoid something called as overfitting of data when any classification parameter is need to be get adjusted. They are used in iteration to refine the model and to measure or to change its performance parameters. A scenario where both validation and test data sets are used, the test data set is typically used to assess the final model that is selected during the validation process. Now, what are the advantages or pros of holdout method? 
Maridal method can work fully independent data and it only needs to be done once so that we have lower computational costs. But that's the disadvantage of the holdout method. Performance evaluation is subject to change highly or dramatically for given small size of data. Say for example, if my data input data set is itself very small, if I take out more 20 to 30 percent data, we cannot have enough size of training data set. So what are the different challenges in holdout method? The division of data among the different classes like class of training, validation and test, which data or which sample should go inside training, which samples should go in validation and which samples should go in test bucket are the only challenging tasks in the third out method. The solution for this particular challenge can be only find out that something called as stratified random sample. In stratified random sampling, we create different strats of data or different buckets of data and in each bucket we take 70 to 80 percent as training data and remaining data as our validation and test data. So if data is being picked upon from different different buckets, there are less chances that we will have more biased data in either of this bucket. So that is something called as stratified random sampling. Another variation of holdout method is called as k-fold cross-validation method. Now let us look into detail how this special variant of, of holdout method that is called k-fold cross-validation method works. So basically k-fold validation evaluates data across entire training set. It does it so by dividing a training set into k-fold or k sub -affection where k is nothing but a positive integer. And again, after dividing a model into k folds of training data, it trains model k times, each time leaving a different fold out of a training data that can be used as validation set. Say for example, I have 10 different samples and if I use two-fold cross data validation, then I will divide my data set into two different parts. One part will be of five samples and another part will be of another five samples. First I will consider first five samples as training data. I will train my model using that training data and let next five samples will be used as validation data set. And we will validate the performance of a model using next five data samples of a given input data. Later on, in another iteration, we again, we will first train our model using next five samples and we will validate the performance of our model using first five samples. So this is what k-fold cross-validation does. Later, the performance matrix, whatever it is, an accuracy of a model or an ROC of model that is chosen for the best one you need. So, we basically take out the average of all k different tests that are performed over a particular model. So, finally, once the best parameter combination is being found out, we find the model is again retained using a full data set. Let us understand this k fold cross validation method with an, an example. So, consider we already have set of data which is being given inside data set. A we will perform or we will make our model train k times. Now, during all k different iterations, the data set would be same. There would be no change in our data set. But only part of data set from where training data and test data is being picked up is different. So, in iteration 1, my first 5 samples are considered as test data. In iteration 2, Next 5 samples will be considered as my test data and equation k, last 5 samples will be considered as my test data. So, what will be my training data in this case? So, in equation 1, as you can see, our remaining samples are called as training data of my equation 1. Remaining data leaving all those 5 samples in equation 2 are boxed by those green samples. 
which are nothing but my training data for second iteration. So likewise, if we change our size or window, it is like sliding a window from samples to samples. Those are called as test fold 1, test fold 2, up to test fold k. So basically, this method is dividing our input data into k completely distinct or not overlapping random partitions and these partitions are called as folds. As we know that multiple handouts have been drawn, these trading and test data are more likely to represent and resemble an original data. We have two different popular methods which are variations of k-fold cross-validation method which are called as 10-fold cross-validation or 10-fold CV. Or we have another variation that is called as Lucy, leave one out cross validation. Let us look into the detail. In 10 fold cross validation or 10 fold CV, we divide our complete training set into 10 folds. And for each of these 10 fold, test fold is comprising of only 10% of data. So, complete data set is divided into 10 folds and out of these 10 folds, only one fold is kept for testing. Remaining 9 folds will be used or 90% of data will be used as a training. So, this process is repeated 10 times. That means for first time, first 10% is the validation data and remaining 90% is my training data. In next iteration, we will have next 10% as validation data and remaining 90 as our training data. Likewise, this process is not repeated 8 times but explicitly 10 times. That's why we are having 10 folds and method is called as 10 fold cross validation. And the average performance across all the folds is being reported and calculated accordingly. In leave one out cross validation or no CV, only one record that is being left as a validation and remaining all data instances in a given input data is used as our training data set. So instead of leaving only 10% or some k% percent of data for validation, we only leave one record at a time for validation and remaining data is used for training. So imagine if we have n data, n samples in the data set, we will repeat this process n times every time leaving one record for validation and remaining record for training. So, as you know that number of iterations here is in this case is equal to the number of samples given in an input data set. It is very expensive and which is not used in a practice. Let us discuss another method of sampling which is called as bootstrap sampling. It is another popular way of identifying training and test data from a given input data set. This method uses something called as simple sampling sampling with replacement SRSWR for drawing a random sample. It picks a random sample from a data instance which is given as an input to the data set and it has possibility of same data set or same instance that can be picked up multiple times. Say for example, for a given school, if you want to calculate an average height of all students, in that school, let us consider there are thousand students. It is very difficult to find, identify the measure the height of and we have the data of measurement of height of all 1000 students. What do we do in this case? In this, out of 1,000 students, we collect only 5 samples or the height of only 5 students. We measure that height and we calculate their average height. And we repeat this average height for 10 times. So these random samples of size 5 is being carried out 10 times. We will perform our experiment, say for example, 7 times. And 
all seven times i will randomly pick five students measure their height and find their average later on i will mix these samples again all those students again randomly i will pick five students i will measure their height and find out an average height and likewise i can repeat this process n time let us understand some different way we have an input data set we find one sample or one good step sample we will draw only 10 samples out of given samples in second sample also we will draw randomly any 10 samples likewise in the time we will draw randomly any 10 samples now if you observe carefully in our original input data set there are only five blue circles now in first sample i can see that there is only one sample blue in color but still in sampling we have drawn samples randomly we have more possibility that same data instance or same object is being picked up multiple times in our end sample you can see there are more than five blue circles that means there are more than one blue circles which are selected multiple times and we have missed selecting our brown circle sample in our end sample so basically this method is called as simple random sampling with replacement so in this method input data set is having n data instances bootstrapping can create one or more training data sets having n instances some of the data instances are being repeated multiple times these kind of sampling are only useful in those cases if input data set is of small size that is having very less number of data instances or records in it let us now discuss lazy versus eager learners eager learners are those algorithms who follows the general principle of machine learning they try to construct a generalized or input independent target function during the model training phase they typically follow the steps of machine learning that is they perform first input data with an abstraction and later on generalization so that they come up with a trained model at the end of learning phase when test data comes in an eager learners algorithm is ready with the model it doesn't need to refer back for the training of the data they take more time in learning phase as compared to lazy learners an algorithm which adopts eager learning is type decision trees support vector machine and neural network as compared to eager learners lazy learners basically skips some general principles of machine learning they skip basically an abstraction phase and they directly jump into the generalization phase they do not actually learn anything but they use this training data as it is this is called as group learning or memorization so whatever is given in data set they will try to dig up all the things or an information given in data set they will not try to learn from that data set due to their complete dependency on the data input data set they are also called as instance learning or non parametric learning algorithm they take very little time in training because there is much not much of training in this type of learners that basically happen they will not try to find out all the aspects given in a data set whatever the data set is they will first find out one is the training set one on the rest of the validation set they will train according to that and measure the performance adjust the parameter and the model is ready those algorithms which adopts lazy learning are kvrs neighbor so this is all for today thank you everyone for watching this video this is munira topia signing out